Hello, and welcome back to the exciting world of at-home amateur historical costume design. Today we're going to be making a Regency era dress. Let's see what fabrics we have available to us. We have this fitted bed sheet. I bought at Goodwill. I think it... A queen? Twin? Tw extra long twin? Very long, but narrow. We also have a matching pillowcase with this nice floral. Maybe we can make a bodice or something out of that. We also have this curtain, also purchased in the fabric section of Goodwill. Already marred during the aforementioned Little Women costumes of December 2019, but that's okay. This lace from the same costume. And bonus round. This blue, it's shiny, it doesn't really go, but maybe we'll find use for it. And exactly one quarter yard of this blue that I was going to use to make a stuffed whale and never did. But before we do anything, I want to talk to you about these pants. You see, when I bought them, I thought they were business person pants because they're this nice fabric and they've got the stripes and they've got pockets and a fly and belt loops. But my mom tells me that they look like pajama pants. So basically I need to know. Will I be laughed out at business meetings when I eventually have to go to business meetings, as I assume all adults do, um, if I wear these pants? As I've said before, when I'm making a historical garment, I try to always start with a lot of research. This was the research image I chose to consult most often as I made this dress. It's actually not a genuine historical article. It's actually a costume from the Australian Opera's 1973 production of Sergei Prokofiev's War and Peace. And the costume design for that was by Tom Lingland and Suzanne Steele, so they get credit for this glorious dress. And even though it wasn't a genuine historical artifact, I did enough research and it seemed to line up with other dresses of the period and I really liked it, so I decided to use it as my inspiration. The first thing I did was just kind of throw the fabrics up on my dress form to take a look at them all together and test out some combinations and shapes. And I gotta tell you, this was not helpful at all and I don't know why I spent time doing it. Next, I had to dissect my fitted sheet. Now, as a vegetarian, I have always refused to dissect animals in classes, even going so far as to basically fail a quiz about dissection in my freshman year biology class because I refused to look at the dead pig in front of me. But I have no qualms about slicing the elastic out of and cutting open all the seams in a fitted sheet. The next thing I did was lay out the sheet flat and fold it over multiple times until it was eight thick so that I could cut out the skirt pieces. I cut them out on the fold so that in the end I had four large pieces. I just freehanded the curve for my waist, making sure that it would all add up to be slightly less than my actual waist measurement because I wanted this to be open in the front and have the curtain showing underneath it. And then I used a measuring tape to make sure that the measurements down to the hem were even. It was really difficult to cut through this because it was eight layers of fabric thick, but I really worked my wrist muscles and made it through. Then I laid the shape I had cut out of the sheet fabric over the curtain and cut out several panels in the same shape. Those would be for the underskirt in the front. The next thing I did was drape my bodice on my dress form. It wound up being a pretty simple design with only four pattern pieces. Then I marked all of those lines and took it down. The next thing I did was cut out all of those pieces and partway through I realized I had forgotten to draw one of the lines on the center front piece and I had to go just sort of hold it up to the dress form and see where I thought it would be and I was really nervous that was going to mess things up down the line but actually it ended up working just fine. So oftentimes when creating a new garment, I will do what's called a mock-up, where I will make the garment out of extraneous fabric once to see if it fits. And I was tempted to do that here because I was somewhat concerned that my pattern wasn't going to fit, but I didn't want to waste fabric in case it did wind up fitting, so I decided to do this tricky little thing that I like to do called a mock-up lining. And that's where you make a mock-up, and if it works, you make it the lining, and if it doesn't, you don't. It's kind of like when you say something and then decide whether or not you were joking based on how everyone reacts. So this is me laying out all my pattern pieces on my lining slash mock-up fabric, and this is me going to reach for a pin and pulling the entire thing down off the table. But eventually I got my act together and got the whole thing cut out. And I had a nice little conversation with my mom about things this one actor had been in. Oh, what's that? Black Dahlia. He's been in a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then I sewed all of those pieces together and tried it on. When I tried it on, it almost fit, but it just needed a few small alterations to the side front piece. So I seam ripped that piece out, recut it with the alterations, and sewed it back in to have a complete lining. 
Then I cut out the same pattern pieces with the alterations for the outside fabric. The back and side front were out of the stripes, but I cut the center front out of the floral pillowcase. I used a half inch seam allowance through pretty much this entire project. Next, I had to cut the sleeves out. Now, I wanted to cut them with a bunch of extra fabric to make them gathered like they were in the image I was following, but I didn't have enough, so they were slightly less gathered than would be ideal. But since I wasn't making this dress out of quite as fancy fabric as the image I was following, I felt that that was fitting for a more casual version. Then I sewed the outer layer of the bodice together and sewed it along the top and sides to the lining bodice. I should tell you now that I was leaving these open at the side seam because I wanted it to close under the arm. Then I sewed all of the pieces of the curtain skirt together and all of the pieces of the sheet skirt together before moving over to my ironing board. Then I took my bodice over to my little baby ironing board and ironed down flat all of the seam allowance for both the inner layer and the outer layer. And when it got to the curbs, it was very difficult to iron on a flat surface, so I did something that I would call charitably incredibly stupid, and I ironed it in my hand, which remarkably did not burn me, but I still cannot recommend. Then I clipped all the corners so that when I turned it inside out, it would point nice and pointily, and I turned it inside out. Then I realized that I had forgotten to clip the curves, so I went back in and did that. If you have never clipped the curves, it is just making small incisions into the seam allowance of a garment where there are curved edges, and that allows everything to lie nice and flat when it is turned back inside out. What's this? Me back at the ironing board, ironing down the center front piece more? That's right. That's because one of the corners of this piece did not lie nicely when I ironed it, and I did not like that, so I went back, seam ripped it out, sewed it again, and ironed it again. The next thing I did was sew the skirts to the bodice. Now, I messed this up a lot of times, so I'm just going to tell you how you should do it. First of all, find the side opening of your bodice and find where that lines up on your outer skirt. I was lucky and it lined up at a seam, so I simply ripped that seam about 8 inches down and did a tack stitch to hold it in place. That way, I would be able to put closures into that side. Next, I laid down the outer skirt over the bodice and then the underskirt over the outer skirt. It's counterintuitive, but it will work when you flip everything inside out. Then sew it all down in place, making sure that you leave the opening in the center front on the outer skirt. So this is what the dress looks like right now. I just tried it on and I'm pretty pleased with the fit. Um, there are just a few things that still need to be done. So one, these straps need to be sewn together and then the sleeves need to be added. Uh, there needs to be a closure on this side. I was initially thinking that I was going to do a series of hooks and bars, but it was really difficult to pin that closed on myself, so I now think I might need to do a zipper just for wearability, but that's not period, so I really don't want to do that, so I'm hoping to still make hook and bars work somehow. Um, the other problem is this fabric, this beautiful white see-through fabric, um, is as I said see-through, so I'm going to need to figure out a solution to that because it is a little scandalous. Um, these still need to be attached to each other, the two pieces of the skirt, so we don't have this very sexy slit we've got going on right here. And then everything will need to be hemmed, and then a little bit of trim added, but I think we're in a really good place. Next, I sewed the sleeves into the bodice. I had been hoping to gather them at the top, but they actually fit the holes perfectly, making this the first time that I was ever disappointed that my sleeves fit perfectly. Next, I stitched the edges of the underskirt to some seam allowance on the outer skirt to hold it together. Now you could just make the underskirt go all the way around, but I didn't have enough fabric. The next step was to give both skirts a rolled hem, and I moved my camera so you'd actually get a different angle of this as opposed to being in the same place all the time. You're welcome. The next thing I did was set to work making some cuffs for the sleeves. I decided to tear them because when you tear you can get perfectly straight lines for minimal effort. Once I had strips of my desired thickness, I wrapped them around my arm to decide how long they should be. I was lucky that I was wearing this dress with these cutouts in the sleeves, which allowed for easy access. Then I decided I actually wanted my cuffs to be a little bit thicker, and I tore some new strips to the same length. I sewed those cuffs into some short and fat tubes, and then pinned the sleeves into them, gathering them as I did. This is what that step looked like when completed. Then I sewed them down along the edges. The next step was to turn under the edge of the cuff and then turn the entire cuff itself over the edge of the sleeve to create a nice and finished edge. After I had done that, I hand sewed it down with a cross stitch. Please enjoy this audio of my mother, my sister, and I reacting to the medical drama television show we were watching at the time. I wonder how short that eggs is. He's shrimpy. 
But Tay Diggs has gravitas. He doesn't need height. He's pretty. But he doesn't do it for me. He puts too much ego and too much sexuality. And yeah, she's she's not in love with him. Possibly, but I don't. She dazzles me. I've never met a man who would say she dazzles me. Ex-wife, buddy. Ex-wife. There we go. Is he gonna punch him? Oh, Mark's a totally chill bro. He's gonna give me his sperm and then have no drama. Are they gonna like invent a way to de-sterile him? I don't think they're advanced enough for that. No, they totally they call them sterile. Oh, oh I told you! I told you they were gonna de-sterilize his sperm! They're gonna, they're they're gonna, gonna do like sperm CPR and get them to swim. <laughs> That's what people say to me every time I arrive anywhere. Chandra Rhymes is the sex ed teacher we deserve. Oh! Finally, for once on television, the sexy midwife gets the girl. Oh, oh, now Tay Diggs! Oh my god! Everyone wants to kiss Audrey! Oh my god! Oh now he sees! Oh my god! He's like, I'm Tay Diggs, I don't need to say nothing more. I hope you enjoyed that brief insight into my family life. The next thing I did was sew hook and bar closures into the side. Then I just machine stitched down the seam allowance and it was time to get dressed. Now, since I didn't have any additional fabric to employ in the solving of the see-through skirt panel issue, I decided to get creative and wear this skirt I made as part of an 1860s evening ensemble as a petticoat of sorts. It was a light gray color that blended in well. It was just a little bit long for the task, so I rolled the waistband over a couple of times to bring it up a couple of inches, and then I used a safety pin to bustle the back so that it would no longer have a train effect. I was also sporting the Regency corset I made in another video. Remember when I said that I should add a zipper so that I could actually get the side closed? Well, I didn't, and this is me struggling profusely to get those hook and bars closed and then finally giving up and asking my mother. So this is the final product. I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out, and it's actually shockingly comfortable. Sorry these shots are a bit overexposed and you can't really see the detailing, but trust me the stripes are there. It made me want to sit in a rocking chair and dramatically embroider and read Pride and Prejudice, and then run through the hills as if to escape from a foul-faced man who wanted to propose marriage to me.